One of the hardest things in deep cleaning your home is setting aside the time to do it. Finding the hours that give your home attention it truly deserves can sometimes feel daunting. So I have challenged myself to completely transform my house in just one week. In this video, I will be sharing useful tips, easy to follow techniques and efficient hacks on how you can achieve a perfectly clean and refreshed home in just seven days or less. And let's go ahead and start with day one. I started off on Monday with deep cleaning the kitchen with just typically a very high traffic area of any home. First, I steamed the microwave by mixing two tablespoons of citric acid with two cups of water and placing it on high for eight to 10 minutes and then leaving it for additional five minutes. Citric acid is a natural ingredient that can be used as a descaler, disinfectant, and a great alternative to bleach. While the steam helps loosen up any buildup, citric acid acts as a natural degreaser. As an actual cleaning agent, I used a homemade solution of white vinegar, rubbing alcohol, and filtered water. If you guys didn't know, vinegar works amazing on stainless steel. It is a perfect add-on for streak-free cleaning. Using a microfiber cloth gives you numerous benefits over disposable paper towels. Not only it will save you a good chunk of your money, but it's also reusable, easy to wash, super absorbent, and perfect for cleaning any surfaces of your house. I wash the remaining parts of the microwave in the sink with hot water and dish soap and place them on the towel to fully dry. Now that the microwave was out of the way, I moved on to the sink and window area. To clean the pines, I mixed half a cup of vinegar with warm water and I put an old uh, cotton sock over my hand which allowed me to simultaneously swipe over each slat from both sides. Vinegar works great at removing dust buildup which can be maintained by going over your blinds with a feather duster at least once a week. Then I went ahead and conditioned the wooden blinds using a Perfect House Furniture Polish Spray. I prefer this brand over any other since it does not have any harsh chemicals. However, you can completely replace any wood cleaning agent by mixing vegetable or olive oil and lemon juice. To clean the windows, I used a homemade solution of vinegar, rubbing alcohol and uh, water that I had mentioned earlier. If you're dealing with unpleasant odors, your dishes aren't getting clean, or your dishwasher isn't draining properly, it may be the time to clean your dishwasher filter. You should clean your dishwasher filter at least every other week, especially if you live in a big household. Any brand I use in this video is non-toxic, however, you can fill your sink with equal portions of warm water and vinegar and soak your filter for 30 minutes to an hour. Keep in mind, vinegar is a great descaling agent, you just need to give it some time to work. Don't forget to wipe down the sides of your dishwasher, those are the ones that oftentimes get splashed with grease or leftover particles. To descale the dishwasher, I poured two tablespoons of citric acid in a detergent compartment and then ran it empty on high cycle. And then I started working on the sink and the faucet area. Another way you can descale your faucet is by grabbing an old kitchen towel, damping it in vinegar, and then wrapping it around, giving an hour to work. I used my favorite pink paste to scrub down the sink. However, it can be easily replaced with baking soda, a tad of dish soap, and warm water. The brush that I used to scrub down really stubborn areas is by Rubbermaid. It's really affordable, and I highly recommend adding it as one of your cleaning staples. Cleaning your electric kettle is a very simple process and you should not be neglecting it. I combined two tablespoons of citric acid with three cups of water, brought a mixture to a boil and allowed it to stand while I moved on to descaling the coffee maker. This particular coffee machine is really easy to, de uh, to clean. However, it took me a while to figure out how to reset the descaling button. 
Then I use my favorite Zoflora multi-purpose cleaning spray to wipe down the counters. You can clean your counters with vinegar solution, however, do not use it on marble or granite. To decrease the ranch hood, I used vinegar and water. I did not need to clean the ranch hood filters since I recently replaced them, but you can clean yours by soaking them up in hot water and dish soap for 30 minutes to an hour, and then placing them in your dishwasher on hot cycle. Then I moved on to wiping down the glass cooktop. Simple dish soap and vinegar work as good as the Wyman cooktop cleaner. If you have a gas stove, you can clean the grates by soaking them up in vinegar for 30 minutes and then using baking soda and dish soap paste to scrub down the stubborn stains. To clean granite or marble countertops, all you need is some warm soapy water. Dish soap works perfectly to make the solution. Wipe your countertops with a microfiber cloth. You want to rinse your microfiber cloth with plain water every now and then so you're not just spreading dirty suds around. Then you can buff the granite or marble counter with a dry microfiber cloth to get rid of the streaks and water stains. It's important not to use vinegar on granite or marble as it can compromise the integrity of the stone and ruin the sealant used on the granite or marble. If it has been a while since you've cleaned your cabinet doors, you aren't alone. This isn't a type of a chore most people do regularly. While this is true, it doesn't mean you should put off cleaning your cabinet doors completely. Kitchen cabinets are prone to oil stains and grease and require frequent cleaning. Most people don't make cleaning their cabinets a priority just because they don't realize the doors are dirty. Your home is your castle and you don't want it to make you sick. Even if your cabinet doors aren't extremely dirty, they should still be sanitized to make sure the entire family isn't exposed to the growing bacteria and germs. Same goes for wiping down all of the appliances in the kitchen. And here I am using rubbing alcohol, distilled vinegar, and warm water solution to go all over the surface, clean, and sanitize. Cleaning your baseboards isn't exciting and I doubt anyone will ever compliment you on how clean your baseboards are, but it's a sort of task when completed to a sparkling tea makes your home feel and look much better. Trash cans are an essential part of every household, however, many people overlook the importance of cleaning their trash cans regularly. Trash cans are breeding grounds for bacteria, viruses, and other harmful microorganisms. When left unclean for an extended period, they can pose a significant health risk to you and your family. Cleaning a trash can regularly eliminates odors, disease-causing germs, and harmful bacteria. Day two was my typical laundry day, but before I deep cleaned and sanitized my washer. How to clean a front low washing machine. First, remove the dispenser drawer and check for mold. The only time I use bleach is when I am dealing with mold, however, if you are absolutely allergic to it, you can replace it with hydrogen peroxide or white vinegar. Then check the rubber seal for leftover detergent, loose hair, or any other debris. You can use a scrubbing tool and a damp cloth to remove all of the unwanted gunk. And don't forget to wipe down the door before descaling and sanitizing your washer. Borax works as a descaling agent and vinegar kills any unwanted bacteria and odors. If you have a top loader, fill the drum with hot water, add two cups of vinegar, use the hottest temperature setting on your machine, and allow the machine to go through the full cycle. Proper dryer maintenance involves more than just emptying the lint screen, so it's important to know how to clean the dryer, including the vent, drum, and exterior. First, clean the lint screen or filter every time you dry a load of clothes. Then, remove the leftover lint inside the lint trap by vacuuming or using a long, flexible dry lint brush. Gently wipe down the drum with warm water and dish soap and let it air dry before starting a cycle. Please do not use any harsh flammable chemicals to clean your dryer.
You can refresh lint filter in the sink with warm water once in a while, but make sure to have a strainer so all of the leftover lint does not clog your pipes. Many of us already know how to clean a bathroom, but the sink can be often undercleaned as we tend to focus on other, more obviously dirty fittings like the toilet and shower. Generally, the buildup of dirt can be either from soap scum or calcium deposits, so cleaning the sink is a two-step process. My go-to products when it comes to cleaning the bathroom are the Pink Stuff Multi-Surface Cleaner and Zoflora Bathroom Lime Scale Remover. However, you can easily replace these products with white vinegar as a descaling agent and baking soda or citric acid to help with harsh stains. So the first step in cleaning the sink and faucet is removing soap scum and lime scale deposits. Before you start to really scrub down any dirt and grime, it's a good idea to leave some bathroom cleaner to soak on the areas which will need the most care. And the second step is cleaning the sink's drain. Bathroom sinks are prone to blockages due to hair buildup which can lead to slow draining and unpleasant smells. I personally did not have a drain snake on hand, so I used a screwdriver and some disinfecting wipes to remove all of the hair buildup. Then I sprayed the drain with a Zoflora Power Bathroom Foam and let it sit for 10 minutes. To get rid of the smell, you can pour a cup of vinegar down the drain and let it sit for 30 minutes. Then I finished off with a microfiber cloth and the pink stuff to give my sink that extra shine. Don't forget to wipe down the backsplash, counters, and clean your mirrors. Make sure you wipe down your mirrors last after cleaning the sink and counters. It's also important to wipe down your cabinets and drawers as those are notorious for collecting dust, accumulating hair, and product buildup. Moving on to the toilet. First cardinal rule of cleaning the toilet is starting at the top. Spray the toilet tank and flush handle. This particular model had a tank built inside the wall, so I started off with wiping down the flush buttons. Then I sprayed and thoroughly wiped down the toilet seat, paying attention to every detail and making sure to remove any backsplash and dirt. I used a disinfecting wipe to go over the toilet bowl to collect any hair, dust and grime prior to deep cleaning it. My all-time favorite toilet cleaning tool is a Clorox wand. It's disposable, it comes pre-soaked in the cleaning solution, so all you need to do is wet it. First, scrub the entire bowl, including the underside of the rim. Let sit for 15 minutes, allowing the solution to work. In the meantime, wipe down behind the toilet seat and clean the toilet bowl on the outside. Then repeat the whole process and make sure to clean inside the drain absolute last. Although your shower is designed to keep you clean, the space can actually become dirty quite quickly. If not cleaned properly and regularly, showers build up with soap scum, mildew and bacteria. I started off with soaking the overhead shower head with a lime scale solution and I used a plastic bag to cover it up and let it sit while I tackle the rest of the shower. Another alternative is grabbing an old towel, damping it in vinegar and wrapping it around the shower head. Head. Spray the lime scale remover all over the glass surfaces, ensuring to cover the walls, shower floor, and other areas. You can also use vinegar for cleaning glass shower as it helps dissolve soap scum and mineral deposits. I prefer a magic eraser or a kitchen sponge over a microfiber cloth when it comes to scrubbing down stubborn buildup. It's always a good idea to steam your shower first, as steam helps loosen up any buildup, but for the sake of this video, I did it last, so the steam wouldn't um, fog the camera and my whole bathroom wouldn't turn into a hot sauna.
The first step to transforming your living room is to clear away the clutter from your coffee table or any other pieces of furniture. Then banish all dust. I use the window and glass cleaner to wipe down all surfaces of the living room. I did not need to vacuum my couch that day, but I highly recommend doing so on a regular basis. Also, wash or change any throw blankets or pillow covers that you use regularly. Wipe down all electronics and dust any wall decor. Windows are prone to a smoke film building from cooking, smoking, using the fireplace in the home, and burning candles. This buildup could be also affecting your health. A cleaner window can help the air in the home stay fresh and also prevent mold growth. Then I vacuumed and mopped all floors, including the kitchen and the dining area. You don't need to buy a bunch of fancy things to mop your floors and get them clean. I've been really liking this floor cleaner recently, but you can easily replace it with castle soap or white vinegar. I prefer mopping my floors with hot water over cold, since my flooring can tolerate high temperatures. It can also kill germs and remove stains, grease, and dirt build up faster than cold water. Alright, day 5. Going off of a bedroom cleaning checklist. Dead skin, bacteria and germs accumulate quickly on bed sheets, particularly pillowcases. So be sure to change or wash your bed sheets at least once a week and even more frequently during cold and flu season. Just remember, washing your sheets on super high temperatures may damage the material, so a 60 degree wash is an ultimate perfect temperature for killing germs and bacteria. Sleeping on a mattress for a certain length of time can cause indents or sagging, so it is recommended to rotate your mattress every six months to a year to prevent this from happening. Next bedroom checklist is declutter, put things away and wipe down your nightstand and dresser. It is vital to clean under your bed once in a while. The things that you can't see are actually pretty gross. It's a mixture of dead skin cells, hair, pet dander, dead bugs, spider poop, and in certain cases food crumbs. The best way to clean the dust under your bed is with a vacuum or a Swiffer mop. Pick up your closet regularly. It helps you find things a lot quicker, it eliminates clutter and decision fatigue. Clean closet makes up for a clean mind, it makes you feel balanced, calm and collected instead of overwhelmed, frustrated and stressed. Get yourself a mattress cover. It protects the mattress from dust, helps extend the warranty on the mattress. It also keeps your mattress free from dust stains and spills. To put the duvet cover easily back on the duvet, place the duvet cover on the bed inside out, match the duvet to the duvet cover, roll both toward the end, turn the duvet cover inside out again and simply start unrolling. Next on the bedroom cleaning checklist is putting away clean laundry. You don't have to spend hours a day folding clean laundry, especially if you have a big household. Just take 15 to 20 minutes each day of the week. Air out your space once in a while, it helps improve air quality. Moving closer to the end of the week, so day 6 was a pick me up day, it was also the last day of deep cleaning the home. I basically went around the house and tackled things that got messy again, 
or things that I missed or neglected during the week. My vanity needed to be prepped for the week ahead. I dropped and spilled my bronzer somewhere in the middle of the week and it was still sitting there. I put away the rest of the makeup and cleaned the top. Then I went ahead and wiped down the dining table again and unloaded the dish rack from the night before. I honestly forgot to water the plants when I was deep cleaning the living room, so today was a perfect day for me to catch up on that. I also vacuumed all of the entryway rugs. There was really no point in washing them since it's been raining a lot lately. And I also sprayed our mud trapper with vinegar and rubbing alcohol solution to sanitize and also get rid of all odors. Then I finally got to something that I had been postponing for a while now. I cleaned the staircase glass, which was honestly in need of a good wipe down due to fingerprints, water stains, and any other smudges. And lastly, I decluttered our fridge, wiped down the shelves, threw away some expired food. You should always do so at the end of the week or before going grocery shopping. And yeah, I restocked the fridge with some good food and fresh produce. I set the last cleaning day to become my pure rest day, or at least I wanted to try to do so. We oftentimes get caught up in our daily chores and activities, and it's starting to take a toll on our mental and physical health. You need to learn how to allocate time for yourself. It builds your mental strength, improves your emotional regulation, and it also helps you relax. Whether you go on a walk, watch your favorite show, or spend time with your loved ones, it helps you feel restored and face another day. Then I meal prepped for the week, made some good nutritious food, poured myself a glass of wine, and indulged in some Netflix. So I hope this video gave you enough motivation to clean your home. Don't feel pressured to follow a strict schedule. You can create the one that will fit your needs. And thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.